Welcome to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. We begin with our politics lead, President Trump, bringing in his 73rd birthday at the White House today, gifted with 50 minutes on his favorite channel of largely unchallenged, freewheeling opportunities to attack foes and air grievances. Happy birthday, Mr. President. The president taking the opportunity to try and clean up that statement that even many Republican officials found wrong and outrageous that he would theoretically openly welcome and accept dirt on a political opponent provided by a foreign government and that he would not necessarily call the FBI, national security experts from both parties, as well as a bipartisan chorus on Capitol Hill, condemned the sentiment behind the president's remarks, though other Republicans, including the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, acted as if it's no big deal for the president of the United States to tell the world he thinks there's nothing wrong with such collusion. Just minutes ago, one of the Democratic presidential candidates, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, told me that he's concerned that this will not just be a theoretical discussion for President Trump. Are you worried that President Trump will take, will accept help from foreign intelligence services, foreign governments? Well, he just said as much, which is, uh, of course, increasingly worrisome, uh, extremely worrisome. Uh, but of course, we shouldn't be surprised. CNN's Abby Phillip now kicks off our coverage from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. President Trump marking his 73rd birthday with a cleanup call on his favorite morning TV show, attempting to explain his controversial claim that he would accept dirt on a political opponent from a foreign government. I think it was accurately stated, and I've had a lot of support. Well, then clarify it. Yeah, I mean, I've had a lot of support. A day after receiving blowback from both Democrats and some Republicans, Trump attempted to clarify with one part double down. And of course you have to look at it because if you don't look at it, you're not going to know if it's bad. And one part walk back. But of course you give it to the FBI or report it to the attorney general or somebody uh, like that. Trump even expanding on his claim that a foreign government's attempt to interfere in a campaign is similar to his conversations with world leaders. I had dinner with the Queen. I met with the Prime Minister of the UK. I was with the head of France. I was with the head of all these nations, and I constantly am, constantly talking to them. Uh, am I supposed to put, you know, the president of France, or am I supposed to report him to the FBI? We took swift action. But as Trump tap danced around his original claim, he may have made matters worse, now insisting that he should sit down with the foreign government offering political help to listen first. If you don't hear what it is, uh, you're not right. going to know what it is. I mean, how That's can right. you report how something? How do you know it's bad you if you don't listen to it? So, Mr. President, I... No, no, they say, oh, no. he, would, he would accept it. Well, if I don't listen... You're not going to know. All this prompting an extraordinary rebuke from the Democratic Federal Election Commission chair, Ellen Weintraub, who wrote in a statement, let me make something 100 percent clear to the American public or anyone running for public office. It is illegal to solicit, accept or receive anything of value from a foreign national in connection with a U.S. election. This is not a novel concept. And even though Russia did offer the Trump campaign political dirt in 2016, Trump is now claiming that he would never face that choice. I don't think anybody would present me with anything bad because they know how much I love this country. Nobody's going to present me with anything. President Trump called the Russian investigation the worst political scandal in the country's history. But in this lengthy interview on Fox today, he did not say anything about actual Russian interference in the 2016 election. Nothing really to condemn it, Jake. Abby Phillip at the White House, thanks so much. Uh, let's chew over this uh, with our experts. Um, did the president's clarification clarify anything for you, Bill? Yeah, clarified that he's fine with foreign governments approaching people in campaigns with information. He's going to look at it and decide whether it's somehow corrupt or not. That's unbelievable, right? Almost to go that far is unbelievable, right? You, shouldn't you just say no, thank you, and call the FBI the next moment? Just remember, though, what is this based on? In 2016, his son got an email saying the Russian government's interested in basically in helping your father, and we have some information. And Donald Trump Dirt Jr., on Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Dirt on Hillary Clinton. I think, and Donald Trump Jr. emailed back, what is it? If, if, if it's what you say, I love it. Right. Especially later. <laughs> and Donald especially Trump, later in the summer. Yeah. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump has never, ever denounced that, said that was the wrong thing to do, that that was a mistake. He wishes his son hadn't said it. That's what they believe is the right thing to do. A foreign, hostile foreign government, not just a random, the Trump people are trying to say, well, would you take some random person of another nationality, you know, violence shows up somewhere and has something. That's not what it was. It was the government of Russia, and they welcomed it.
But even during the campaign in 2016, remember, he was very public uh, about saying, hey, Russia, if you're out there, I'll take those emails. Right? right. And I mean, the other thing that's interesting about this, though, is that, you know, polling wise, most Americans know more about the second part of the report, the obstruction, not the first part. With the president talking about it so much, it's sort of re getting us to revisit this whole question about collusion with the Russians and the Russian involvement. And I'll tell you the other thing, LawWorks came out with a poll earlier this week. A majority of Americans actually don't think Think you should take information from a foreign government. That's, and let's just because Karen brought it up, uh, let's remind our viewers what the Republican nominee, uh, Trump, President Trump, now said in July 2016. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Now, later, the president said he was just joking that wasn't meant to be taken seriously. But, Jeremy, it sounds like it's meant to be taken seriously. I mean, he's now basically of the position, no collusion, no collusion. Now he's saying, yes, collusion, it's fine. Right. And, and what he's doing right now with his comments is essentially reiterating that Russia, if you're out there and you can find those emails, then find them, right? It's an invitation for other countries, foreign powers, potentially even those who are adversaries of the United States, to come in uh, and essentially offer him information on his opponents, uh, suggesting that he would welcome it. And that's why I think fundamentally it's important to view the comments that the president made this morning, not as a walk back, but as an attempt to really muddy the waters here. Um, and either it's that he misunderstands what this actually entails, which seems unlikely, or it's the fact that he's simply trying to reframe this issue to try and justify his earlier comments, reframing this notion that you have to first look at the information, and if it's bad, then share it with the FBI, which actually would probably amount to more interference than anything else if, if you're sharing information from a foreign power that is somehow derogatory to try and spark an investigation. It, it raises a lot of questions. And, and Sungman, so take a listen to the national press secretary for the president's re-election campaign, Kelly uh, McEnany, earlier. The president is our leader. We follow everything he says. As he said, a case-by-case -case basis, he said he would likely do both, listen to what they have to say, uh, but also report it to the FBI. The FBI has been pretty clear what they think should happen. You report it to the FBI and you're not allowed to accept this information. And by far, most Republicans on Capitol Hill have also said we would go to the FBI immediately and report to them. But this, again, shows just how the president's comments, I mean, beyond the appropriateness of it, it also has put Republicans in a difficult position once again. I had a really interesting, brief but interesting conversation with Lindsey Graham about this yesterday when he said, you know, I talked to the president this morning to try to get a little bit of clarity on his comments and I explained to him these are the times when conversations with foreign officials are okay, you don't have to report it. But then if they're offering you something that's inappropriate, then you should report it. But it's just the fact that they have to have these conversations with the President of the United States is a fascinating dynamic. And they will not support legislation that would make this, right. that would simply say, very simple legislation. If, if an agent of a foreign government or someone you think is an agent of a foreign government approaches you in a campaign, for whatever reason, report it to the FBI. But it's not even What's wrong with that? But they won't. Mitch McConnell won't bring it to the floor. Exactly. Lindsey Graham won't put any pressure on Mitch McConnell to bring it to the floor. All these Republican senators, I'm sorry if I'm worked up about this, but are getting credit for, you know, five of them actually criticized sort of vaguely, mildly the president of the United States today with one or two sentences. They could actually do something about this, and they're unwilling to. But obviously, I think Mitch McConnell is, you know, he's a politically astute man. He seems to believe that it benefits the Republican Party to not actually put forward any of this kind of legislation and to not put forward any kind of legislation that would protect our elections at this point.